Hi everyone, my name is Monique. And I'm Naveen from Before You Play. And today we're going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Fractured Sky. This game is designed by Zach Dixon, Max Anderson, and Austin Harrison, and it's published by Ivy Games, who are helping sponsor this preview. In this game, players are going to be trying to collect the most amount of starfall by the end of the game. It takes place in kind of a mythical land mm -hmm. where you're going to try to cunningly deduce where this starfall is going to land. That's right. And so this game plays one to five players. And today we're going to be showing you how to play it. Mm -hmm. But before we continue, we do need to mention that this is considered a prototype copy of the game. In fact, things are already being changed for the final product. Now, if you'd like to watch us play the game, we've made a three-player gameplay, which will be coming out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in this campaign, there's going to be a link in the description down below. And without further ado, let's get started. Sure. So if you'd please direct your attention to the center of the table, we're all set up here for a three-player game of Fractured Sky. Welcome to this mythical world. Right. We have the peaceful plains, the torrential tropics, creepy cove, amongst other uh, mythical locations here, mm -hmm. as well as each of our own player boards that houses all of our buildings, as well as our starships. Mm -hmm. Now, before we continue, we do need to mention that because this is set up for a three-player game, we are playing on the three-player side of the board. Mm -hmm. And so in higher player counts, you flip this over and it uh, has space for more players. Now, the way that this game works is it's played over the course of five rounds. And each round, a certain number of these starfall pieces are going to fall in different locations. One location is always going to be public. So we'll always know where at least one of the starfalls is going to go. And so, for example, if this were the first round, it would be falling in Torrential Tropics. Sure. In addition, there's also going to be a certain number of hidden locations that are going to receive some starfall. And the number of these locations is equal to whatever round you're in. Mm -hmm. So for the first round, we're going to have one public starfall and one hidden. Sure. Now, in general, the way that the game works is each player has their own three starships. And at the bottom of the starship is a magnet because we each also have magnetic tokens that are numbered from zero to ten. Each round, each player is going to put out all three of their starships by connecting a starship to one of the numbered tokens secretly and then placing it out in one of the locations on the board. For example, maybe I want to put it in Torrential Tropics because that is a location that's definitely getting a starfall. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the round, the board might look a little something like this, mm -hmm. where each player has placed all three of their airships. We would then reveal all of the power tokens that were beneath each of our airships and see who won each location. Whoever has the most number of power in the locations that are receiving Starfall win that Starfall. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, for the public location, which is Torrential Tropics, purple player has more power than the red player. And so they would get the Starfall. And of course, we would also reveal the hidden location, which happens to be the Dreadful Desert, and the person with the most amount of power there also wins a Starfall, which in this case is green. That is the general idea of what we're going to be doing in this game. But there is more to it than that, sure, yeah. because if you won second place in a location that had Starfall, then you actually win the resources that are at that specific location. And so as you can see, the different locations have different combinations of resources that you can find there, but they're all going to be of three different types. There's going to be gold, you'll find wood, as well as stone or ore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and these resources are going to be used during the round in order to build different structures that we have. So then, the way that a round works is players are going to be taking turns, taking one action each, until they've placed out all three of their airships. On your turn, you can choose to either spend resources to put out one of your buildings or your skimmers, or you can spend resources to either scout or peek, which would allow us to know more information about the hidden locations or one of the objectives cards. And if you can't or you don't want to spend any resources, then you can place out one of your three airships. Now, as for the things that you can build, there are markets that cost one gold and two wood, mm -hmm. and markets are placed in one of these locations here that point to a number of different locations. For example, these two spots here point at the Woeful Wetlands, the Sinister, Sinister Spires, mm -hmm. as well as the Molten Moor. Right. And there are other locations that actually point at four different areas, such as uh, these spots here or these spots. Markets at the end of the round will get you one resource from an adjacent location where you have an airship. Mm -hmm. And so this is a really, really good way for you to gain resources early in the game because you'll need them, obviously, in order to build out your uh, pieces and peek at things. Mm -hmm. Now, these markets will only work and get you that extra resource if you have an airship that has at least one value to it. That's right. So one value power token or more. Yeah, if you place out an airship with that zero, you will not get that benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one exception, and that exception is if a player has a fortress at that location that has an airship there, then the market will activate. Mm -hmm. And so fortresses cost three ore in order to build, and they also get placed in these uh, structure 
spaces here. And what fortresses do is they give you one additional power to that location that has an airship at the end of the round. So they're an, a, a nice way for you to boost your power uh, to try to win those different locations. Mm -hmm. Now it's important to note these two structures will stay where they are from round to round. That's right. Unlike the third thing, which are skimmers. Mm -hmm. And skimmers cost you one wood and one ore. And they allow you to basically place this out on an island, giving you one additional power for that location that round. Right. And I say that round because at the end of the round, these will actually go back to your board. So you'll have to continue to pay those resources to get them out. Mm -hmm. Now, instead of building all of these things, you can spend two gold to scout, which allows you to peek at the hidden location. Sure. So you can take a look at it. Now you know where an additional starfall is going to be falling. But not only that, you get to optionally take one of the resources that are produced at that location. So for example, if I peeked at the Dreadful Desert, I can choose to take a gold because the Dreadful Desert produces two gold. But if I do that, then I place my player token, which is all considered prototype, by the way. This is not going to be in the final uh, copy of the game. Right. And I can place it on that gold spot here, gaining me a gold. Now, the, the issue with that is it also gives my opponents some information about what this location could possibly be. So I know for a fact it could not be the Torrential Tropics That's because right. the Torrential Tropics does not possess gold. Alternatively, if I don't want to gain an additional resource or if I can't, then I place my token here, which still tells everybody that I've taken a look at this card. And so this is not a memory game. If you've looked at a card, you can always look at it again. Sure. And the last thing that you can do with your resources is you can spend any two resources to peek at a round's objective. Now, each game, we are going to have five different objectives, one per each round. And at the end of the round, we're going to reveal it. And the player who most met that objective will gain a starfall piece. Mm -hmm. So taking this action allows you to choose any of the round's objectives, placing your token uh, where the objective is so that we know what you peeked at, and then you can secretly take a look at it. And as an example of an objective, this says, uh, communes collection okay. have the least markets built when revealed. Mm. So at the end of the third round, if you built the least amount of markets, then you would get a star fall. But of course, right now, I'm the only one who knows that. <laughs> So peeking at these objectives will kind of shape how you're going to play because you'll have a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. going forward as to where the star falls are going to land. Exactly. And finally, the action that is free, and that is putting out these airships. Now, when you choose to put out an airship, you're going to choose one of the power tokens that are on your player board to assign to that airship secretly. And so when we play the game, we're actually going to have player screens that are covering all of our power tokens because this is all done in secret. Mm -hmm. Now, power tokens range from zero to 10 with the one and the 10 being the only two tokens that have a white border. And so the reason for that is because when you choose that token to place out onto the board, you'll see that it's white. So all you'll know is that it's either a one or a 10. Mm -hmm. Now, the one really important rule that you have to follow when putting out these airships is the maximum sum of all three of the power tokens on your airships cannot exceed 10. Mm -hmm. If so, then the power of all three of your airships is going to be reduced by the amount that you are over by. If you are the first player to place out an airship at a location, for example, if I were to go here to Creating Cliffs, then I also get to take a look at one of the location cards that is in the deck, because this is definitely a location that is not going to be on the board. Right. And the first person to put out their last airship gets to decide their turn order for the next round. And so if you were to choose a third player, by the way, that comes with a gold. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice way to gain resources. And this is really important because the new turn order will determine this round's tiebreaker. And when everyone's passed for the round, then you resolve each location, starting with that round's objective, actually, which happens to be ludicrous leverage. Okay. Have the most troop power in Torrential Tropics. Oh my goodness, that player would win two Starfall tokens because that's also the public location. That's right. So as an example, let's go ahead and reveal these three power tokens. So red player has three power, green with four, and purple with three, which means green player would win both uh, Starfall, Starfall yeah. because they have the highest power. And so Starfall goes on your player board just like this. The next reward after the Starfall token would be both of the resources that the location produces. And so since they are tied for power, you look at the current uh, turn order for the next round. And mm -hmm. so red would break the tie there. So red would get an ore as well as a wood. That's right. And purple does not get left empty handed. They get to choose one of the two resources there to take. 
So maybe I would take one. Sure. And since both green and red have markets that point to the torrential tropics, as well as power tokens that were higher than a zero, yep. they each gain one of the resources there. And that's just an example of how we would resolve one of the locations. Mm -hmm. But of course, we would resolve each one one by one. Sure. Keeping in mind that towers give one additional power as well as skimmers. Once that's done, then we clean up, remove all of the pieces from the board, except for the two structures, which are markets and fortresses. And we reshuffle all of the location cards specifically. Each round, we're going to have one additional hidden location, but always one public location. Mm -hmm. And at the end of five rounds, whoever has the most starfall is going to be the winner. And so that is how you play Fractured Sky. Again, if you'd like to see us play this game, we are going to be releasing a three-player playthrough of it tomorrow, where we kind of demonstrate every single concept that we've discussed today. Now, this game is currently on Kickstarter, so there is a link to the campaign down in the description. If you have any questions about the game or anything you saw here, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. And thank you all so much for watching the video. We hope it was helpful. If you'd like to see more like this in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.